So how do you find the canals? Let's briefly talk about the game of endo so we know what the rules are. Three rules. One is the rationale. So if we take a tooth that has a dead pulp, even if it's draining through the sulcus, as long as the probing is precipitous, that is the walls are parallel versus conical, which would make it a periodontal abscess, then we can clean and shape and pack. And here's the patient with a restored tooth by a, name, a guy named John Coyce. Some of you know his name. 31 year post treatment. Maybe today you would remove it. This is 31 years ago. We didn't have implants. But just to show you, a lot of dentistry, if it's done well, can last a long time. The technology isn't necessarily saving us. It's, it's the, the excellent dentistry. So John did a foundation and so forth. So what this means, if you have a healthy pulp and a healthy attachment apparatus, everything's pretty good. But then the pulp gets damaged, becomes non-vital. Dead tissue, bacteria leach out of foramina, portals of exit, causing lesions of endodontic origin. If we extract these teeth, the lesions go away. That's the way we're built. We're on automatic pilot when it comes to that. Just like when blinking. Nobody's thought about blinking since they got here, have they? Or breathing or pumping blood. See? It's automatic. And the same thing's true. It's automatic if you take away a tooth, the disease that's related to the tooth, adios. So if we could do the same successful removal of the anatomy through endodontics as we do removing the tooth, we're going to have the same success. And in fact, that's true. But the truth is, in endo, really it's 100 minus X. We have 100% capacity for healing, but the, we don't have that. But, so what is X? Well, it's not the size of the lesion. That doesn't matter. It's not if there's a sinus tract. They heal too. Doesn't even matter if the patient doesn't pay. They still heal. They still heal. Darn it, you know? It heals anyway. What matters is three things. One, it's the knowledge of what to do, which I'm going to teach you now. Not like you don't know it, but pretend like you're high school students. You just came in because it looked like something of interest, because you'll learn so much faster. You won't have to unlearn. So one is knowledge of what to do. Two is the skill to get there. We're, talk, we're going to talk that today. And the third one is what? Our willingness. And I can't, and that's going to be up to you. So, what does this mean to you and me? When we see it, an endo, failure to seal the darn thing, when you're short, say, it doesn't mean it's going to fail. But the reverse is true. When we see an, a lesion of endodontic origin, it's because it's not sealed. Our job as endodontic clinicians are to heal or prevent LEOs, lesions of endodontic origin. That's our job. And the source is that the contents of that tooth. So that's what this is all about. So the rationale of endo is very simple. Any endodontically diseased tooth can be saved if the endodontic system can be sealed, either non-surgically or surgically or both, if the periodontal condition is healthy or can be made healthy, and of course has to be restorable. What's the point of doing it if it ain't restorable? So the first rule is the rationale. Second rule is nature doesn't make straight lines. They're all curved. She gives you a little straight line and then she throws a curve. She doesn't know how to make straight lines. Think about it. Even a laser shot into space bends because of uh, cholesterol, celestial um, uh, bodies bend it. So I don't know what the deal is about her and straight lines, but this is the way root canal systems are made. And I've written this, it's available for you, and I can, if you go to my website, you can get all this information, of course. And then the last one is nature doesn't make two things the same. Everything's unique. No two DNAs the same, no two snowflakes, no two trees, no two rocks, no two nothings. So you know this, everything's unique. She doesn't even make two faces the same, does she? I mean, look at all the faces here. How many variables do we have? Half a dozen? Mouth, ears, nose, varying amounts of hair, teeth, lips. And she's never made two people look the same. There's seven billion of us. Nobody looks the same. And if we look through history, no, nobody looks like Abe Lincoln, you know. And you know that she is so ineffective at creating duplicates, she can't even do the same side of the face the same. If I take through Photoshop and put two sides of my face on, I look like a different person, me and Bill. If I take the other side, it's someone else. It's like, hey, can't you get it right? You can, you can, and you should do this with some of the really um, good-looking 
Hollywood type people, and you can make them look ugly. I can make Brad Pitt look ugly. So anyway, this is what teeth look like. They're unique, they're novel, and they're curved. And if we understand that, and just appreciate with every access, I'd never seen this roadmap before. But I know the rules of the game, and I got the right tools, and I have the right attitude, I know what to do next. It's going to be the 10 o'clock visit you can't wait for. Only man makes straight lines. Sometimes dentists, look at this straight lines in this tooth. We know that's not what it looks like. So those are the rules. If we do it right, we're going to have success. And the rules are the anatomy is curved and it's unique.